When you ran your simulation, you may have seen a wave propagating to the right. And once it reached the snow's surface, you probably saw a reflection. And another reflection was generated at the surface of the ground, since at the moment we don't have the body. Both of these reflections then propagated to the left. The interaction of the incident and the reflected waves together created some interesting oscillatory behavior as the reflection was generated. However, did you notice that there appeared to be a reflection generated on the left side of the grid? Right here, as these approach the left side, another reflection was generated here. If we were to zoom in on the plot and figure out exactly where this reflection was being generated, we would have found that it was being generated at the location of the source. That is, the reflection from the snow on the ground is retro-reflecting off of our source. Here's a snapshot of the EZ fields in the grid after 43,000 time steps. So this is the retro-reflection propagating to the right. So question, is this what we want? Is this what would happen in real life? Well, if we think about it, the hard source that we're using right now is not very realistic. The reason is the electric field is hard-coded to a specific value, regardless of what is going on around it. And because the hard source is not impacted by anything going on around it, it reflects any wave that is incident upon it. And this reflection is non-physical. To make our source more realistic, what we should do is model a current density, J, at the location of the source as if there was a dipole antenna at the location of the source. When we were developing the PML absorbing boundary condition in module FDTD5, we discussed the more general form of Ampere's law that includes a J current density term. The curl of H is equal to J plus epsilon dE dt. In the case of the PML, we introduced J so that we could account for the moving electrons in the conductive PML due to the presence of the time-changing electric fields. At that time, we used the microscopic form of Ohm's law to relate the current density, J, to the electric field using the conductivity of the material, so J is equal to sigma E. In that case, since J represents the flow of electrons in the conductive PML material, we could more specifically right, J, this is due to a conductive material. Now we want to model a J current density at the location of our source to represent current flowing along the simple antenna like a dipole. Here we again have moving electrons, but instead of modeling electrons in a conductive material that are reacting to the presence of electric fields, time-changing electric fields, we want to model electrons here that are moving because there's a source generator at that location causing the electrons to move according to a specific time waveform. As a result, at the location of the source, we should use J source and this will be equal to the Gaussian modulating a sinusoid, the source waveform that we developed. So now we want to solve at the location of the source, the curl of H is equal to J source, which is our time waveform, plus epsilon dE dt. After simplifying Ampere's law to 1D and also applying central differencing as we did before, and it's going to be centered at N plus 0.5 and at I, we will get HY N plus 0.5, I plus 0.5, minus HY N plus 0.5, I minus 0.5, all over delta X, and that is equal to epsilon E Z at position I N plus 1 minus E Z I at time step n, that was n plus 1, over delta t, and now we're going to have plus j z i and n plus 0.5, and this is j source. 
And then solving for the future value of EZ at n plus 1 location i, we'll get that's equal to EZ at i plus delta t over epsilon delta x. So I'm just rearranging terms here to solve for the future value of EZ. And we have delta t over epsilon jzi source n plus 0.5. So this is the update equation that we want to implement at the source. If we look at this equation, we can see that the first part is just a regular update up to here. This is the same as what we have for our regular update. It's identical to the form of the update equation we have for EZ everywhere in the grid. So at the location of the source, the only new thing that we need to do is that we need to subtract this extra term. What do you think is the best way to implement the source in your model? Take your code out and look at it. Write down what you would add or change in your code in order to change the hard source in your grid to this so-called soft source or current density source. In the next video, we'll compare our ideas for how to best implement this source in your model.